Hi, my name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. This is our Tuesday night live show. Normally, we talk about art journals, and we actually complete a art journal page during my show. But I've had a ton of people wanting to know more about paint um, and mediums. So tonight's show is going to be strictly about paints and mediums. We're not going to do any art at all. But hopefully you'll get a lot out of it. And then what also I'm going to do, if you're joining me live, I'm going to put the um, questions and answers up um, at the end of the show so that we will be able to get all of your questions. So get yourself a piece of paper out and a pen and write down your questions as they come to you during the show. And don't put them on where we normally do over there on Google, okay? Hold on until I think I can I think I can put the questions and answers up, I think. Maybe, maybe not. But we're gonna answer all questions at the end. I think it'll be a lot easier for me. And I think if you let me go through my whole spiel, I think I'll answer most of your questions. Okay? So um, hold your questions to the end. Remember, I'm, I, um, I am by myself tonight, so be kind to me. If you do have a question, put it in um, caps for me. And as people come in, if you can remind them, if they start asking me questions and I'm not seeing it, because I'm going to be kind of in my spill going, so I don't want to miss you. Okay, right down there, that's my blog. So stop by my blog to find any information that um, is on my shows. And if you're watching this at a later day, join me on Tuesdays and give me a thumbs up. Okay, I'm going to switch cameras. Okay, yeah, this is actually what we normally do is like an art page like this is what we would um, actually complete in the class. But tonight, like I said, I'm just going to talk about paints. But real quickly, I want to give myself a pat on the back. If you are not a subscriber to the Rubber Stamp Madness, magazine. Sorry, I always go backwards on the camera. Um, this is the fall issue. Just came out. Get this issue because I have a big old spread in it. It's very proud. Oh, I should have marked the page. I'm sorry about that. I can find it pretty quickly. But here it is. Here's my spread. And for some of you who have been with me for a long time, you remember when we made that page. It was the very first page that we did when we start art journaling. How cool is that? Um, thank you, um, Dana. Appreciate that. So if you get a chance, get this magazine, Rubber Stamp Madness. Um, subscribe to them, actually, because I'm in a lot of them. And um, enjoy the article. Thank you. Okay, let's get going. Let me move that out of my way. Okay, like I said, I want you to answer, um, put all your questions to the end, but I'm going to do my best to explain paint. <clears throat> and all we're talking about tonight is acrylic paints. Now, for starters, um, acrylic paint, what is it? It's basically acrylic. If you think about acrylic, acrylic is plastic. And plastic is in, and I'm not a chemist, people. Oh, my heading's still up. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Appreciate that. I always try to remember to take that down too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So acrylic paint is basically um, it's it's plastic polymer, and polymer the way it works. And again, I'm not a chemist. Is it's kind of little round balls, and it sticks together by being touching each itself. And when they make paint, they take the polymer, the liquid polymer, and they add pigment to it, and the pigment kind of hangs out in between these acrylic polymer thingies, and they, that's how, what adheres to your paper or your, you know, whatever you're looking at, okay? So, you remember that page, I remember that page too, that's so cool, huh? So that's kind of what um, acrylic paint is. Now, if you think about that, if I pulled out something from Golden that says polymer medium gloss, see that? That's basically naked paint. Because I just told you that paint is polymer medium with a 
pigment added to it, right? So this is naked paint. That's what naked paint is. And that's what a lot of the mediums are. They're basically this, and then they add stuff to it. And I don't know everything they add to it. I'm, again, I'm not a chemist. As they add stuff to it, it does different things. And I'm going to explain what it does, but I don't necessarily know what they add it. Okay? So I want to start off kind of really basic. Acrylic paints you can find in all different types of what they're going to call grades. And if you kind of think about what they call the grade, you'll understand what the paint is about. So the very first one that most of you know is something called craft paints. And you find them at Michael's. They're in the craft aisle by themselves. They're not with the Michael's paints. They're, with, they're all by themselves. And Americana and folk art and... Um, Apple Barrel, those are the names that you know that are acrylic paints that are called craft paints. Now if you think about the word craft paint, it's meant to do crafts. It's not meant to make beautiful canvases. It's meant to paint onto a piece of wood or a um, chipboard item and then you're slapping a bunch of stuff on top of it. That's what craft paints are. So if you think about the word right off the bat, the word craft is telling me that this is not a high quality paint. It's good enough to do crafts with, but I'm not going to um, go out and paint Mona Lisa with it, right? Kind of understanding where I'm going? So now when they make craft paints, it's not as high quality and the pigments that are in these paints are nothing like the pigments that you're going to find in, say, a golden product. Okay, the pigments are like a world of difference. They're okay, they work, they're great for crafts, but if I'm going to paint Mona Lisa, I'm probably not going to pull these out. So I'm hoping you're understanding there. Then they have um, something, and I don't actually have any, they have a, um, a whole line in Michaels. If you go into Michaels, they have the craft section with the paint, and then they have what they call the artist section, and that's where you're going to go in and you're going to find Golden's paints, and you're going to find the tubes of paints, and the, and the um, tubs of paints that are all Golden, or um, I also have some Liquitex stuff. They're all the more high-end paints. And then over there, you'll notice when you go over there that you'll see what they call student grade, which I honestly don't have any um, to show you, or um, what they call artist grade. The difference between those two is just a little bit of quality, meaning it's going to be the student grade is going to be one step up from this, but one step down from golden. See what I'm saying? So it's going to be like right in between. This is the cheapest. This is your hamburger. This is your maybe T-bone steak, and this is your filet mignon. See the difference? And there's nothing wrong with student paints, especially if you are trying to learn paints. Student paints might be the perfect ones for you to go with, you know, over, you know, say golden. Um, or you know, something on the high end like that. Actually, um, America, Americana, most of you know that brand and the craft paints. That is Deco Arts, and Deco Arts just came out with a whole new line of um, high end paints, and they're called the Media. I'm trying to get the glare off there. Now, we're going to work with these tonight because these are really awesome, and I just bought their 10 set, and I'm going to talk more about this. 10 set um, um, paint set right there that is a great starter set and I'm going to explain more about that in a minute. So that's kind of where I want to kind of explain. Now, also when you go into the really high end paints like say golden, you'll find that there's all kinds of different goldens. Why is there so many different goldens? It just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, I'm going to grab this one because it's the very first one. This one says golden open acrylic. See that? Now, I've, tried, I've explained to you in the past that the word open in the art world 
the only thing that means is this paint will stay wet longer because it's open. See what I'm saying? The word open. So that's how you kind of remember that. And then here's one again. And this one says fluid acrylics. Okay. Again, what's the difference between a fluid acrylic and an open? Well, the open's going to stay wet a little longer. And the fluid acrylics have a little more um, liquid to them. They're more fluid. Again, with the name fluid acrylics. Now, there's also something called artist colors. And you can get this in the tubes. And the reason I buy the tubes is because they're five ounces over four. And you can also get it in. Um, well, these just this one just says acrylics. I thought you could get it in another one, but um, Artist Color is basically, it's just the Artist Quality, regular, um, it's a little thicker than the Fluid Acrylics, but it's just a good paint, so you could thin this down. Um, that's a Fluid Acrylic here, and then this one just says Acrylic on it, and it's just a little more wet than, say, the um, Artist but a little less than the uh, fluids. Okay. Okay. Now, I want to talk about, so hopefully that now you understand. And there's also another one that I don't have, and it's called heavy body acrylics. And the reason I don't buy the heavy body acrylics is, one, um, I don't do a lot of canvas, really heavy-duty canvas painting. But I could take a artist color paint or even um, an open or a fluid color and add it to something like a heavy gel. Okay. See again how that says golden artist colors heavy gel gloss. Okay. See that? So that is, again, kind of that naked paint thing that I was telling you about earlier, except for it's heavy, meaning it's, it's got a lot, of, um, a lot of body to it. It's, it's going to, oh, let me see here. It's, it's, um, it's not going to fall off my stick. See that? Heavy. Heavy duty. So I could take this naked paint add color to it and have what they call a heavy body paint. See that? So that's the reason I would prefer to buy a gel because I'm very thrifty even though I buy high quality stuff I'm still thrifty so I would rather buy this jar of medium or even something smaller and have a mess load of colors and add the color to the medium. Got it? <clears throat> so, okay. I'm sorry, Vicki, that you keep having to go to YouTube. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I apologize for you guys that are having to go over to YouTube. Uh, I'll send a report at the end of the show. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go on. So, um, in general, you can take paints... Oh, also, you could take, you don't have to buy, say, open acrylics either. You can buy all artist co um, colors and, uh, and take something called, this one right here, it's called a retardant. Sorry about the glare, there we go. Okay, see that? You take this and you add it to any paint and it's going to give you more open time. <laughs> so you can take any of your paints, add this to it, and now you have an open paint. See? So again, you can buy mediums to add to your paints so you don't have to cost you as much. So a good medium would be like a heavy gel if you think you're going to get into doing some really texture stuff on your um, paintings. And if you are in a really dry area or you need to put some paint down 
me show you. Let me show you. Say I want to say I want to put some paint down. So I'm going to mix this little blue, I mean this green, into the um, retardant. So now it's making it open. So if I put this on here, it's going to stay wet for me really long. So I could go in and say, now I didn't gesso, so it's not going to allow me to do that. Um, I could because it absorbed into the page. To actually done what I the technique that I was trying to do, I should have um, sealed this page. And I could have done that in um, a couple different ways. I could have done um, a gel medium, um, like a regular matte gel medium. Okay. Or even a fluid matte medium. Either one of those. I could have put onto this piece of paper. It would have sealed it and made it so it's not so absorbent. And then I could have actually like written into that page or whatever. I could have actually played with it. So that's what an um, an open paint will allow you to do. Okay. Okay. Let's keep moving on here. <clears throat> now I want to talk about buying paints. I think this ten set from um, um, Delta. Um, Deco Arts, excuse me, I drew a blank there. It's really awesome. But say you were on a really tight budget and you don't, you only want to buy a few things to start with in the high quality paints. I would buy, I'm going to pull them out right here. Okay. Um, I would start off with this little set right here which is basically seven colors and I would add probably one or two to that and I'm going to explain that in a minute. Let me explain what these colors are. Um, the first one is primary yellow Okay, and this is the new Deco Arts mediums. The next one is going to be primary blue Okay. Um, um, carbon black. Um, Titan white. This is a really good one to own. This is, if you notice, remember that really big one I showed you a few minutes ago. This is actually Titan white too. This is probably one of the best colors. That's why I bought it in the biggest tube I could because you're going to use this a lot. And this will do a lot of stuff for you. This is actually what gesso is made out of. Gesso is this, um, a little more powder and some water and I think a couple other things, but I don't know exactly. Um, but this is the color that they use. And this will do a lot of things. And I'm going to explain that more here in a minute. Um, primary magenta. Now the reason I grab primary magenta instead of like a primary red is it really does make a difference um, when you mix the colors that magenta mixes better than um, uh, red, primary red. Okay, it just you'll make prettier colors. And then raw umber, you can do a lot with this color. This can really help age a lot of things. It makes some really cool things. So raw umber. And then the last one I would suggest is something called Titan Buff. Um, Titan Buff I use for faces, for starters, but it's going to give you a warmer tone than the Titan White. And I'm going to explain that here in a minute. So if you go to you know, your basics on um, working with color, we know from, hopefully from grade school, that if you have yellow, blue, 
I'm using magenta, white, oh. sorry I should have had that mixed, white, this is burnt umber, this is black, and then I want to do Titan Buff in here because I really want to show you the difference. Okay, you can see right off the bat there, the Titan Buff next to the white, what a difference that is right off the bat. See how the Titan Buff is a lot more of a um, cooler color than the white? Ah, don't go in there. Back, 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 back. Okay. Now, a lot of times when I'm testing colors, I like to work on some type of piece of paper that I can see if I'm working with transparent colors or if I'm working with um, opaque colors. And that's always, you know, fun to know because you can do a lot of different things with that. So if I just pick up this yellow just out of curiosity and put it on here, I can see right off the bat that that is a transparent color. How cool is that right off the bat? So if I take a little of this yellow and I add a little bit of that Titan Buff, and excuse me, that was the, um, not the Titan Buff, the Titan White, excuse me. It's going to take that now from something that was transparent to something that is more opaque. And I can make that even more opaque by adding more white to it. See that? See the difference? So that's why I would tell you to buy that white because that's going to give you that transparent color. So now if I add blue into our yellow, as most of you know, this should give me green. Now since I had a little white in there, it's probably going to give me more of a kind of like a tealish color. See that? And because I had the white in there, it's still it's now transparent. If I go and clean, hold on here, clean, get a fresh yellow, clean again because I want to see is this blue it's a little transparent, but it's a little opaque also. So if I do add that in there, it's probably going to give me more of a um, more of an opaque color. So there's that beautiful green. So just having those two colors, now I have green. If I add more blue to it, I'm going to get more of a teal color. So I have a large range of colors here. If I add just a tiny bit of black um, black to it, it's really going to um, darken that color. See that? Um, thought it was raw umber. Did I not say raw umber? Burnt umber. Bur um, raw umber is another color. It's more of a um, kind of more of a yellow. Okay, now let's do that. Let me explain how raw umber works with your paints. If I take this yellow again, since we've been working with it, and I add a little bit of this raw umber into it, check the color I'm going to get out in this. See how that gives me kind of a golden color now? Isn't that awesome? So having that just a few colors there, see how it gave me a huge range? And we've only used a few now. Let me clean again. And let's make my favorite color. Blue and the um, magenta make a beautiful purple and it's a really solid color beautiful purple there and you can go either way with that so if I wanted to take a little more red 
I can turn that more into a softer so it's really up to you how you want to play with these colors to get the color you want actually I should have put that right next to it see where one's more blue and the other one's more red see that and then again you can take just a touch of white put that in there and now you have a pastel of the same thing that you just started with and it really depends on how far you want to take it down if I keep adding more and more white to it it's just going to keep lightening that color till I have a really soft pastel -y color just by adding white to it okay now let's add something else really fun to this mix where is it um, if you go in and you buy something called pearlizing medium and honestly I've never found this in the expensive people I find this over in the cheap section as you see this is the Americana section so if I add this to my paint let's go back and get this I really want a dark color hold on I need to clean my brush here I want a dark color so if I take this red this magenta and I paint it on here okay beautiful now I want to take that magenta and I want to take this pearlizing medium and I want to add that into my magenta this is going to expand your paints also because what this does is it takes your paint and makes it a metallic so look here this one is the non-metallic and this is the metallic so you see is it not showing up on camera as, uh, as much as I want it there but there's a little more sheen to the one side than the other <coughs> and then you can add even more fun to your paints you come in and you get oh last week I apologized I said this wrong a few times it was interference colors that I was using you know how you get that stuck in your head all of a sudden you say something and you don't even realize you're saying it wrong and you just keep saying it over and over and over till I heard it on the um, on the sh recording I went oh I kept saying that wrong all night so sorry about that <coughs> I'm actually pretty happy with them um, Laura the uh, new deco art media um, media paints they seem to be as good as um, all the rest of them okay now if you take interference gold and you put that over top of your paints again that makes things all kinds of fun that gives you another um, level I guess is the word I want to say to your paints that you didn't have a few minutes ago so I'm taking this interference gold let's put it over top this gold dark purple now that totally changed that color to a different color again just by adding a fun color so they have as in the interferences they have probably six different shades so just buy yourself one and it will really make a difference in your um, paints okay one other thing I want to show you when you're working with Titan buff that was the one that was this one right here Titan buff No, it doesn't want to focus. Focus. Okay, anyways, Titan Buff. So if I take this blue and I paint it on here, now I take that blue and I add some Titan Buff to it, it's going to give me a really kind of like a warm blue. See that? Now if I take that same blue, cleaning off my brush so I have a clean brush, same blue, and I add the um, titanium white in it, it's more of a pastel color and it's not as warm. 
So that's why I was telling you to add the Titan Buffs because it really does give you three different looks in your paint. See that? Pretty cool, huh? Okay. Okay, now I want to get into, um, and that 10 pack, just for an FYI, that I originally started with, even though I told you I would buy six of the seven, does come with a uh, purple, a kind of an orange, another red, and a um, green blue. So it does come with that. Now I think I've already told you this, but if you take a transparent, if you take two transparent colors and put them together, mix them together, they come out transparent. But if you take an opaque color and a transparent color and mix them together, you get opaque. And just so you know, opaque means you can't see through it. Transparent means you can see through it. And if you want a transparent paint to not be transparent anymore, you want it to be opaque, you can add the um, titanium white to it. Okay? Okay. I know I love the purple gold too. Okay, let me clean off my brush and we're going to play with some more mediums. There are a ton of mediums out there. Um, I have a special request for this one, so I'm going to talk about this one right off the bat. What time is it? Wow, that took a half hour just to explain paints. <laughs> but hopefully you got a lot done, a lot out of that. Okay, now um, this comes in both Golden and Liquitex. Um, I think Deco Art is coming out with their own also. Um, and also, um, 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 what you call it, has it, um, uh, Fiber Castell um, also has glass beads. Glass beads. Somebody specifically requested this. Now, when I explain right from the get-go, I just bought this because I didn't have a new jar. I used all of my last jar. Um, as I explained to somebody last week, Um, or, I mean, excuse me, got my train of thought there. What I've explained to you already is basically mediums are naked paint, right? But they have things added to them. That's what makes them all different mediums. So again, the glass beads is naked paint with things added to it. So, I can use this in a multiple ways. I can use it right out of the package like this onto my sheet. And what will happen is you will, um, the, the medium, the white part, will dry clear. And it's really hard to see, but there are really tiny little beads actually suspended in the medium. Now, because that's a medium, like I explained earlier, you could take this and add it to say this paint right here because it's a medium and turn it into whatever color you want it. So now the white part, the part that was white is now green so when it when you paint it onto your canvas or whatever you're using it's now going to be green when it dries with little um, Yes, I will talk to you about flesh tone. Um, it will have little glass beads suspended in the um, paint. So that's what glass beads are. Okay, somebody really quickly just asked for me to talk about flesh tone. And honestly, um, the flesh tone that I use the most is Titan Buff. Okay, it's a golden product. Um, it works really awesome. I might add a little pink to it, or actually, I usually paint that on it, and then I'll go in with a little pink or a little blue, depending on the mood I'm looking for, and then my painting. So, but that's what I start with. That's my flesh. Say that again, please. Oh, I don't know what you just asked. I think I'm gonna assume. 
Can you tell me what it was, Susan, that you want me to say again? You got to remember that um, it it shows up, you know, a few minutes late over there than what I see. So I apologize. It's hard for me to catch that. I'm going to repeat the last thing I was talking about. Um, the glass beads are a medium. So everything that's in the glass beads that's white, okay, as you see it, it's a white paste. It's white. See that? With little glass beads in it. So if I take this medium, and I just happen to have some sitting right there, so I'm going to use that. I take that medium and I add color to it and mix it in to the medium. Now I'm going to have um, this will dry with a green tint to it with little glass beads suspended in it. What's that good for? Um, snow is a really good one. Uh, water is another one. You can just use it as an accent just somewhere, something that you want the eye to... Um... Yes, okay, got it, Susan. Um, what it... Um... So anyways, lost my train of thought. Okay, the question that Susan is, is what makes transparent makes it opaque? So if you have a transparent paint... Cleaning my brush here. I think this green is transparent. So I have a transparent paint here. Okay. I add tight um, titanium white to it. And now I have an opaque paint. See that? So it's um, titanium white is the one that will do that. Yes, um, Barbara just said glass beads can also be used as texture and dimension. Absolutely. Glass beads can be used for a lot of really fun things. Just play with them. Okay. <clears throat> okay, there's another one that's kind of fun to play with. Um, and I buy it in the little jar because you don't need a lot of it. There it is. My, my oxide iron oxide. See that? And this is from Golden. Like sand or water? Absolutely, Lee. That would be so pretty. Um, if I added more pigment to it, Susan, it wouldn't have changed the color so much. I had a lot of white there, not a whole lot of um, pigment. Okay, now this particular... Oh, is dry. Oh, I can't show you. It's dry. Oh, bummer. It's dry. See that? It's kind of, um, it's kind of a cool paint. It has um, little suspensions of... Um, almost like blackness in it. It's really cool. I, I need to get more now. I'm bummed that that's dry. Okay, on we go. <laughs> on we go. Okay, so again, like I told you earlier, that if I wanted to make um, a heavy body paint, I could take um, heavy gel right there, add... Add paint uh, pigment to it. Just happen to have red paint there. Mix that in. And now I have a really thick paint compared to the fluid I had before. See the difference? It'll make peaks. See my peak? So it's a really heavy duty paint now. So that's good for, um, again, getting a lot of texture on your pages and getting a lot of um, fun stuff. But it definitely, it's holding a peak. Unlike, see that? See that peak? Um, fluid paints would not do that. 
So you don't need to buy heavy duty paint, you just add um, um, medium to it. Okay, the other thing that's good to know is say you only have a medium in gloss and you want to do just say a little section of the paint like, like I actually have gloss here and everything else is matte and this is actually a real life painting I'm going to keep forever but I don't like that the fact that that's gloss right there but everything else is matte so what I could do is I can actually go in with a um, fluid matte medium put that over top of that gloss and it will turn that gloss into um, Um, it'll turn that gloss into matte. So that's a really good technique or thing to know also. Okay. Let me clean this brush. Okay. Um, crackle paint. Crackle paste. Um, honestly, I'm an um, Elmer's Glue fan for crackle, but there is some good crackle paste out there. Um light molding paste. There is um, three different grades of molding paste. There's light molding paste, there's regular molding paste, and there's heavy molding paste. It's sort of like the mediums. This light one is going to be more like a whipped cream. It's going to be really super soft. And as you add more thickness to it as it goes up, it becomes more heavy duty. And that's all, again, to deal with texture. Regular gel. What else do we have here? Matte medium. Fiber paste. Fiber paste is kind of cool too. This one, again, is a medium. These are all mediums, so I can add color to that medium. I can add paint to the medium and make it a color. It'll dry that color. But fiber paste, it actually has fibers in it. Now this is going to be really hard to show, but it has, um, I don't want to say a stringiness to it because that's not the right word, but it has a fiberness to it, fiber to it. You can kind of see it there. So it has a lot of texture to it, so it's a lot of fun. Okay, what else do we have here? Um, coarse pumice gel. It's kind of the same way. This is actually almost like sand. You can almost hear the sand in it. See how if I spread that out? Let's see if I can get it to focus. 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 Okay, it's not focusing very well, but it's very sand-like. It's got a lot of grit and texture to it. Again, you can add paint to this and add color to it. It's a really good, again, for texture. You know, I bet you could, Robin. Robin just asked if you could take regular gel and add glass beads to it. I bet you could. I don't see why you couldn't. Okay, I'm looking to see if I have anything over here that I've missed. Um, gesso, I've talked to you guys about that. There is um, pouring medium is really fun. Um, this is kind of like, it's very liquidy. It's very liquidy. Um, I don't know if you can see it moving in the, in the jar here. You can add um, paint to it and... It just gives, and when it dries, it looks like it's wet. I actually had some paintings, but I actually don't have them anymore. Um, but it has a total, it will keep a wet look even when it's dry. It's really cool. Really cool. Takes a while to dry, so make sure you're ready for that. Um, I think I've gone, oh! Oh God, glazing medium. i got to tell you about this glorious thing. This would be the other thing that I would say you definitely need in your um, group of um, stuff, glaze. Because um, it does a few different things. 
Um, I really should have something that's sealed here. Here, so give me a second. Let me seal a piece of paper so I can work with it. So I'm going to just grab some gel medium and use that as my seal. You could um, use gesso. You could use um, matte medium. And basically that's just going to seal my piece of paper so that anything that I put on top of it will not absorb in. You could also use gel medium, as most of you know, as an adhesive. It's one of my favorite adhesives, matter of fact. Molding paste. Love molding paste. I know it makes awesome stuff, especially to go through like um, um, canvas or uh, stencils and that kind of stuff. Need this to be dry, sorry. Okay. Now, glaze is a, is your friend. Glaze is going to do two things. One, it's going to act a lot like that retardant that I talked about earlier. That when you take your um, paint and you add the retardant to it, it's going to give you that big fancy word, more open time. Um, yes, you can use molding paste or fiber paste, both of them, um, uh, um, through uh, your stencils. Okay, so I put some um, paint down here, and I'm going to put some glazing medium down. Cool things that, um, oh, yeah, almost, you can get a lot of good glazes. A lot of them are pretty much the same. So if I paint it um, on here, and say I decided I didn't like it, I can take my gel, my glazing medium, and the glaze medium can act like a, um, it'll take the paint off. So it'll actually lift the paint directly off of your um, canvas up to a few minutes drying as long as you have a seal there so see how um, as I put the glaze on there it takes it off isn't that cool it also will take a paint and make it more transparent so if I have it one that was I think this is purple so I take a little of this purple Take a little of the glazing medium. And now I put it on. Now it's a little more transparent. And it's also going to take longer for that to dry. It gives you that open time thing again. So you have more time to play with it and say, I want to bring another color in. I can start blending it because that paint is still um, open. So it's allowing me to blend it where that paint right there being dry, coming in with the purple on top of it, it's not going to blend. It's going to go right over top of it and cover it. Where if it's open, it allows you to blend those two colors together and you're getting a lot more, um, you know, prettiness, I guess. If that's what you want to do. You don't have to. This is all experimental. But it also, um, say you're trying to get a shadow, or say you're putting your paint on your canvas and now it's too stark you want to blend it out that's where you can come in again with the straight um, glazing me medium and you start going right along the edges and it's going to totally soften that edge for me so that it's not so stark because the glazing liquid is going to soften it see that there so it's going to um, soften that edge for me so it's not so stark as I had going a few minutes ago. And then again, if I have too much, you know, I want this to um, blend out even more, I can come in with my glazing liquid and again, just keep taking some of that away. and blend it out and blend it out. And this works a lot better if I'm in a sealed area, which I'm not, because this is over here. This was not. 
So it's actually absorbing into the paper a little bit. But I think you guys get the general idea of what I'm trying to say there. See how it softened that edge instead of having the hard edge that we had over here? Isn't that cool? So glazing um, can be a lot of, um, can be totally be your best friend. I've even taken it, grabbed a baby wipe, taken glazing liquid, put it on my finger, and actually gone in and take, look how long that's been dry. Now that is on top of um, a sealed surface. That would not work if I was not on a sealed surface. But taking the glazing liquid and it will actually erase the paint. See that? It won't work on an area that isn't sealed like this right up here. It probably won't work because it's soaked into. It took off that top because that top had the bottom sealed by the other paint but it's not going to take the paint off below it because it was not sealed and it's absorbed into the paper. But as you see, it took that purple right off the top of the red. Took that completely gone. Sorry. Isn't that cool? Okay. Okay, Danielle, have a good one. Uh, you know, it doesn't look like I can answer questions. I can turn on the answer thing. I have to do it before I go live. Bummer. Okay, I am going to open it up to questions, so go. I assume that using only the baby wipe wouldn't do. Um, it, it will, but only to a point. The, um, the glazing liquid reactivates the paint and allows you to get it up a lot better than just using the baby wipe by itself. And I could have actually done that without a baby wipe. I could have taken a um, paper towel and done it without the baby wipe at all. That paper starting to get really worn. Okay, any other questions? So do you have to seal with glazing or would it work with gesso? Um, gesso is a seal. Um, so gesso or um, any type of sealant. So gel medium is a sealant. Um, gesso is a sealant. Any sealant would allow you to do that. It will remo remove paint but only for so long, Pam, I mean Barbara, don't let it dry for days. You have about a 20 minute working period. Okay, any other questions? Um, gel tar, I actually don't have any on my desk right now, but I will um, I will work with that and, and, and talk to you a little bit more. Yes, basically you are right. Um, pouring medium can you make regular acrylics into high um, high flows. So if you take pouring medium and regular acrylic, um, you can do that. What is the label on my brush? Oh, I just got the brand new brush and I haven't replaced the label or haven't took the label off. So is this the one you're talking about? This one I just bought at... This is a number two. It just has a really nice um, angle to it. And I better clean it off before I ruin it. Okay. I think I wasn't sure if I use. Okay, so. Okay, thank you. I wasn't sure if it had to be. Strictly sealant, or it could be a mat. It could be any type of mat. Gel medium can be used on an item to seal it. Yes. Is gel tar the same as string tar? They are similar, but one has more elasticity to it, and the other one doesn't. I'll try to explain that in a future show. 
Yes, pouring mediums and acrylic paints are a lot of fun. Pouring medium is a little expensive, though, so make sure you get it on sale. <laughs> or 40% off coupon. Oop, another paintbrush needs to go in water. Any other questions? Taking care of your paint brushes, that's another good one. I always um, dip mine in water and then I br um, wipe them off and dry them. How do you watch the replays of my class? You go to um, youtube.com slash Terry Sproul and all of the replays are on there. Or you can go to my blog, which is Terry terrysproul.blogspot.com and see these shows also. Um, yes, you can. Um, the question is, is, can you add mediums to craft paints to make them better? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, they are going to make them a little better. Um, but again, you're still working with pigments that aren't as good. So that's the problem. So you're going to be kind of watering them down. Acrylics um, are definitely much better. You definitely want to go with, um, and actually this is not a bad price. This 10-pack from um, their new media, I believe for the whole 10-pack was $25. And if you don't, you don't need to put, th you're welcome, don't put a lot of paint down. When I put paint down on my, on my palette, I put very little down, even when I'm working. And you can always add to it. You can't put the paint back in the bottle. Oh, that's a great tip. Um, Lee just said that if you soak your brushes in wool light and water for a few minutes that all the paint and glitter will come out. That's a great tip. Good to know. Just don't let your paint sit in water. Thank you, Vanessa, for putting up my link to my YouTube channel. Okay, I'm going to refresh again and see if anybody has any more questions. You're welcome, April. Oh, um, while we're waiting, um, if you join my group called All Things Terry Sproul, you will get notifications for all of my classes. If you're watching this, if you watch this again later, please give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Over there on YouTube. Helps my ratings. Okay, looks like we're out of questions, so I'm going to switch cameras and say goodbye. Okay, there I am. Um, thank you again for coming. I hope you um, really learned a lot tonight. Again, if you have questions, let me know. Um, I'm always here to help. I try to really help. I'm not saying I'm the most smartest person in the world, but I really do try to help. <laughs> So um, I hope I did help you tonight. If you can, if you have any questions, there's my blog. Give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to check one more time for questions. And then I am going to shut off here. Um, looks like all the questions are done, so I think everybody's good. If you have a question, again, go to my group called All Things Terry Sproul on Facebook and post your question, and I will take care of that. You have a great night. Bye-bye.